Hello and welcome to RT Ministries. My name is Dwayne and this is the Bible study portion of RT Ministries. Um, we're running through Acts here. We'll get through Acts, verse by verse, day by day. We'll get through Acts together. Um, remember, Acts is the start of the church. We ended up uh, last time on verse 28. It said, to do whatever your hand and your purpose predestined to occur. And listen, the whole world functions under the predestination of God, right? The whole world functions under whatever God wants his hand and his predestined will wants done is being done. So you can trust the Lord in everything that's being done. Um, after they were told what not to preach in his name, they went back and they were all praying to the Lord, right? They said, oh Lord, you know, they started calling out to God. And it said right after that you were predestined to occur, okay, they're, remind, they're reminding themselves when they're talking to the Lord that everything happened according to his will. Good thing to remind yourself of. Everything happens according to God's will. 29. We're on 4, Acts 4, 29. And now, Lord, take note of their threats, okay? They're reminding the Lord and they're just bringing it out in the open. Take note of, the, they take note of their threats. They're saying, Lord, they threatened us. And it's okay to pray to the Lord and tell him what happened. He knows what happens, but they're reminding themselves and him. Take note of their threats and grant, this is what they really want, to grant that your bond servants may speak your word with all confidence. And listen, I want to speak God's word with confidence. I don't want to shrink back just because it's hard, just because they talk about bad subjects, <laughs> subjects that people don't like. I want... To speak the word with all confidence, right? No matter what you, who you're talking to, no matter what you're talking about in the Bible, I have confidence in the Lord, and I hope that shows through. I love the Lord, I love his word, and I will not, I will not tame down his word when it, this is God's word. He knows, you know, who am I to tame down his word at all? So I want to speak his word with all confidence, and I hope you do too. So grant may mean, God, give me the power to, your bond servants may speak your word with all confidence. 30, while you extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your, name of your holy servant, Jesus. Okay, they knew it was, and they're giving glory to him, right? You extend your hand to heal. All the healing was done by God. Um, and the signs and wonders take place through the name of Jesus. All that stuff that they did. You know, a lot of signs and wonders were done in the early church to prove that they were from God and to prove that Jesus Christ was God, to prove that Jesus gave him back from the dead. A lot of that stuff doesn't go on anymore. <clears throat> and your holy servant, Jesus. Extend your hand to heal and signs and wonders take place through the name of your holy servant, Jesus. 31. And when they had prayed, the place where they had gathered together was shaken. Okay, they prayed, told, all this whole prayer was about God. You know, most prayers, we can talk a little bit about prayers. You go into a church, most prayers in churches are God, you know, heal my knee. God, my, my cousin has cancer, heal them. You know, it's all about us. It's all about us. It's all, you know, I need a job. I need this. I need this. I need that. I need money. I, you know, I got cancer. I, you know, I got a surgery coming up. Please pray for healing, pray for chapel mercies. It's all this stuff, and it's all selfish eye stuff. And I'm not saying you can't pray for yourself, but you'd be hard-pressed in the Bible where any of the people prayed for themselves, other than giving them power to speak his word and that kind of stuff. It wasn't, Lord, I'm having a bad day, help me, you know. Prayer nowadays is selfish. We've got to learn to get off of ourselves and get back onto God. And this whole thing... It was all God honoring, every bit of it. Start out with Lord, you made the heavens and the earth. And then by the Gentile, why do the Gentiles rage against you and your holy servant Christ? And then uh, talking about his predestined will, and grant that your servants just be bold, just proclaim your message. And when they had prayed, the place where they gathered shook or shaken. And they were all filled with the Holy Spirit, okay? Now, they didn't speak in tongues when they filled with the Holy Spirit. Remember, last lesson, they were filled with the Holy Spirit. If you're filled with the Holy Spirit, the fruit of the Spirit comes through you. Love, peace, joy, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, self-control, all that stuff comes through you. And you glorify Christ. The Holy Spirit glorifies Christ. He doesn't glorify himself. He glorifies Christ. 
That's how you know you're filled with the Spirit and not talking in tongues and rolling down the aisles and barking like dogs and all the other goofy satanic stuff that happens out there. They're all filled with the Holy Spirit, began to speak the word of God with boldness. Look at it. It's another key. How do you know you're filled with the Holy Spirit? You go out and speak the word with boldness. Be bold. The word, listen, the Bible's true. The God inside of you is Yahweh, right? It's Jesus Christ. It's the Holy Spirit. It's all of them. The Trinity, all one, right? They're all there. You have boldness. If God's for you, who can be against you? We should, we should all ramp up the boldness. That's what happened when they were filled with the Spirit. They were more bold. 32, and the congregation of those who believed were of one heart and soul. <clears throat> First church here. Congregation was all of one. All that congregation wanted the glory of God. They were all of one heart and soul. And most churches are not of one heart and one soul, right? You have many different people, many different things going on in churches, and most of them aren't for God. Some are, some aren't. The ones that are trying to do God's glory, the other ones are doing, <laughs> they got their selfish motives in there. So the congregation of those who believed were one heart, one soul, and not <clears throat> and not one of them claimed that anything belonging to him was his own, right? Okay, they give each other any, but all things were common property to them. Now, the other church decided that all their property, they just kind of pulled it into a fund, and, and whoever needed it took it. Now, it doesn't mean the churches have to do that now, but this was common in the early church. And, and with great, let's see, 33, and with great power, the apostles were giving testimony, okay, Great power and boldness, right? The power comes from boldness, testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus. They were, keep on testifying that Jesus came back from the dead. You know, I don't think we testify of that enough in the gospel. Most people don't mention it. You got to mention the fact that Jesus conquered death, right? And that you got to mention the fact that people can conquer death too. Through Christ, they can conquer death too. We're giving testimony to the resurrection of the Lord Jesus and abundant grace when it was upon them all, meaning God's favor was upon them all. You know, if you go out and speak bold in Christ because you love Jesus Christ, you go out and speak bold, God's favor will be on you too. You'll see the wonders of God work through you. 34. For there was not a needy person among them. Why? Because they pooled their money. There was no needy person there. If they had needs, they took from the pot. For all were owners of land or houses, would, and all, the, all who were owners of land and houses would sell them and bring the proceeds of the sales. Everybody owned land and houses, sold everything, and brought it all of that, because they had the kingdom things in mind. And laid them at the apostles' feet, and they would be distributed to each as any had need. Pooled their money, and they distributed the needs to the people. You know, when you do give, let it go. Don't have strings attached, right? If you do give, you know, some people give and say, man, I can't believe I gave there. They're doing this with the money. They're doing that with the money. That's not somebody who's giving. If you're going to give from the heart, just give. If somebody's in need, just give. Don't worry about it being paid back, right? The Lord will pay you back. 36. Now, Joseph, a Levite of Cyprian birth, who was also called Barnabas by the apostles, which translated means sons of encouragement, and all who owned a tract of land sold it and brought the money and laid it at the apostles' feet. So everybody brought, sold it and brought to the apostle and laid it at their feet. We read about Anani. You know, people say the God of the. I've heard people say God of the Old Testament's harsh and Jesus is full of love. Well. God, the God of the Old Testament is full of love and sometimes he's harsh. He judges. He's a righteous God. And same with the New Testament. Right here's part of it. Ananias and Sapphira. These were both two people in the early church. And before we start, they were, they were part of the church. I, I believe they are saved. They're not unsaved people. They're saved people who lied to the Holy Spirit. And God chose to deal with them and struck them both dead right away. And here's the account of it. Five. But a man named Ananias with his wife Sapphira sold a piece of property, okay? There's nothing wrong with selling the property. Everybody else was selling their property and giving it to the apostles. They chose to do the same thing. And they kept back some of the price for himself with his wife's full knowledge 
and bringing a portion of it, he laid it at the apostles' feet. Okay? Now, the problem with this is, is that all of them promised to bring everything, including Ananias and Sapphira. They sold their stuff and they kept back some of it and then gave and then still had everybody believe and they gave everything that they had. Uh, like, just say they sold it for 20000 Well, you We'll use up-to-date terms. If I sold something, this is what happened. If I sold something in my house for $50,000... But I promised everybody at church, when I'm going to go home, sell my house, and I'm going to give you all of it. Okay? And then I sold my house for 50000 But then I kept back twenty because I got greedy, I got covet, covetous, whatever, and that's what it was. But I decided to take 20 of that and keep it, hide it. And then, but I went back to church and I gave him 30 and let everybody believe that I sold my house for 30 And that's the sin. Now, if they would have said, "Look, we're going to sell our, we're going to sell all this land and stuff, but we're going to keep this much," that wouldn't have that wouldn't have been a sin. But they didn't. They let him believe that they sold it there. Three. But Peter said, "Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land?" Okay. But Peter said to Ananias, "Why has Satan filled your heart to lie?" He asked a Christian. It doesn't say he possessed him. He said Satan filled your mind and your heart with ideas, and you took a hold of them. You know, Christians can sin. Satan can fill our mind with stuff too and we can either reject it, reject the temptations and all the stuff that comes through and follow the word of God or we can be like Ananias, why has Satan filled your heart to lie to the Holy Spirit? You know, who was he lying to? He didn't lie to the church, he was lying to the Holy Spirit because he talked himself into all this. He lied to the Holy Spirit and to keep back some of the price of the land. And here's the key, four. While it remained unsold, okay, did it not re remain your own? In other words, it was your stuff. You could have done with it whatever you wanted. Instead, he promised that he would give it all. And after it was this, and after it was sold, was it not under your control? See, he could have sold it and said, "Look, I sold it for whatever, and I decided to keep this back." But here, take this. Why is it that you have conceived this deed in your heart? He conceived a plan to deceive. The church, but he was really deceiving the Holy Spirit, right? You have not lied to men, but to God. Now, I wonder how many, you know, he deceived the church, but it was really the Holy Spirit, God, that he deceived. I wonder how many people God would, you know, he dealt, he chose to, oh, let me read one more verse, five. And as he heard these words, Ananias fell down and breathed his last, and great fear fell on all who heard it. God decided to deal immediately with his sin, and he killed Ananias. Took his life right from him for lying to him. Now, this is the early church. The purity means something to God. So be careful in churches. God wants his church pure. Ananias lied to the Holy Spirit, lied to God, and God killed him immediately. And I wonder how many people are lying to God in the church now. I wonder if God struck everybody dead in every church that was lying to him now. I wonder how many people would be left. You know, sometimes God deals with people in situations right away. And clearly he don't deal with everybody like this. But God can step in and choose to deal with whoever. And he's perfectly just in doing this. If somebody else had helped him though, I'm gonna, we're going to get to the end of this story. Young men got up, covered him up, and after carrying him out, they buried him. So there's young men in the church, dropped dead, they covered him up, and they took him out and buried him. Now there lapsed an interval of about three hours. Okay, three hours later, and his wife came in, not knowing what happened. So his wife walked through the door, didn't even know her husband was dead. And Peter responded to her, tell me whether you sold the land for such and such a price. So now here she could have said, look, we decided to keep back some. Peter asked her, did you sell your house for, like I used the example myself, 50000 It would have been asked, and I'd give him 30 He would ask, Dwayne, did you, did you sell your house for 30 I could have said, no, I sold it for 50 but I kept back 20 Instead, she said, yeah, I sold it for that. So Peter asked her, you sold your land for such a special price? And she said, yes, that was the price. Then Peter said to her, why is it that you have agreed together? Okay, they agreed this together, husband and wife, to put the Spirit of the Lord to the test. Not good to put the God to the test, and I, we've all done that in certain ways. But my goodness, we gotta 
Keep away from testing the Lord, right? You should test the Lord your God, right? Behold, the feet of those who have buried your husband are at the door, and they will carry you out as well. And immediately, 10, immediately she fell at his feet and breathed her last. And the young men came in and found her dead, and they carried her out and buried her beside her husband. Okay? She lied. She, she dropped dead. The same people that buried her husband came in, seen her dead, took her out, buried her right next to her husband. And God, and I do believe Ananias survivors is in heaven. But God chose to deal with that sin. It was early in the church and to keep his church pure. He chose to deal with that quickly. And what happened? What good did that do? Here's the good that it did, Levin. And great fear fell over the whole church and over all who heard of these things. Say, Dwayne, why is great fear good? Well, I'll tell you why. It keeps the church pure. Fear... I bet you the church growth, <laughs> the church growth movement now wouldn't grow real well if this happened nowadays, would it? I bet you people were careful who came to the church and, and said, I'm a Christian and I'll be part of this congregation. I bet you only true believers were coming out of going into there for a while because it kept all the false ones out because great fear swept over everybody. Now, wouldn't it, wouldn't it, wouldn't the fear sweep over you if you went into church and two people lied to the Holy Spirit and they both dropped dead? Certainly, would if you were in the congregation, you would you would be struck with fear, and you'd be careful with your actions in church. And I guess we can get from this whole thing: be careful with your actions in church. It's you know why you should be careful with your actions in church. I'm going to leave you with this thought: because the church is not yours; it's Jesus Christ's church, and He loves and cares for His church very much. So be careful, be weary, be very careful how you treat the pastor. And how you treat and start trouble in churches. Be careful. Because God loves his church. And, and listen, it's his church, not yours. Yeah. It's not yours. It's not anybody's. The building, you go to a building going to church, the church is Jesus Christ. He's the one who walks among the candlesticks, right? According to the first part of Revelation. He judges his church. If there's any judging to be done, he'll do it. So be careful. Again, be bold. That's what you can get from this. You can be bold. They prayed for God's glory. The, they just reminded themselves who's their creator. And, and God gave them the boldness. Because after they prayed, they went out with boldness. Speaking about the resurrection of the dead. But right after that, people were caught lying to the Holy Spirit. So don't... If you're going to give, give cheerfully. They could have, you know, Ananias and Fires could have came in and gave them a third of what the house sold for and say, here... They could have kept two-thirds. It was theirs to keep. The problem is they lied and let everybody think they gave it all. So don't be like that. Don't lie to the Holy Spirit. Satan can bring things into your head or bring situations around you that tempt you. Don't fall for his stuff because we can... God judges his church. you got to be careful. Um, yeah. I think that'll be it for today. Thanks for tuning in. And we'll see you next time. Bye.